All right, Project Epoch. This is a big one. Server preview. There's a lot of information here, so I'm going to go through it as much as, as fast as I can. Hopefully the video won't be too long, but the reason for that is there's so much content. I've been covering private servers for a very long time now, and I got to say, I have not had to put this much effort and this much information in a video for a private server before. They are not lying when they say they are jamming this server with as much custom content as you've seen on private servers at launch at least. Uh, I'm with them on this one. <laughs> so we're gonna go topic by topic. We're gonna cover everything. This should be your one-stop guide to this server. Uh, and I'm certainly hyped and I'm gonna show you why. So let's get into it. Main features, what I call the highlights, all right? Over 1,000 new quests, 1,100 plus to be exact. New raids, not rehash, completely new raids, including Oldham. Entirely new dungeons, several at max level. New bosses in all dungeons and raids, including, yes, Molten Core. There is one new boss and two in Onyxia's Lair. New race class combinations, such as Dwarf Shaman and Undead Paladin, which you saw in the video. A new battleground, Gilgrim's Isle, which is based on Eye of the Storm and Stranglethorn Vale. All classes and specs tuned and viable, mostly in a TBC state. New PvP content, including a new PvP system. A complete overhaul of professions with many new items to create and much, much more. Intro. It's a WoW Classic Plus server. It's based on the Wrath of the Lich King 3.3.5 client which is fixed to closely re reproduce a classic world with new content based on a Blizz-like foundation, again, featuring over 1,000 new quests. In active development since September 2021 and in the works beforehand, the team claims to, at least at launch, have the most amount of custom content available ever seen before in the private server scene. And it's an English-speaking community. PvE server, rule set, with war mode, similar to turtle wow multi-boxing not allowed global world chat mostly cross-faction excluding battlegrounds and world bosses this is firm uh, i will say this also i did go over this with the lead dev he saw all this information and all of it is accurate and uh that is firm gdkp will not be allowed to be advertised in chat and will lead to a tos violation it's currently undecided how they will tackle GDKP. However, they are not pro GDKP at all, they said, and they're looking into it. Progressive timeline, including new raid tiers, you'll get to experience progression. Donations can be sent. They are available to uh, be submitted. Cash shop to be announced with cosmetics only that fit a classic plus world. Custom launcher with registration via their website that actually just went live tonight as I was recording this video. Release date, quarter two of 2024, June or July, most people are going to say right now. Third open beta is announced for April 5th, which is a week from I'm recording this video. It will last one month long. And I would say, and most people would also say, is that is the, it is the most anticipated private server of the year in 2024 right now. New race class combinations. So you got Undead Paladin, Dwarf Shaman. Human Hunter, Undead Hunter, Dwarf Mage, Troll Warlock, Torrin Priest, Gnome Priest. And it's a picture of a Dwarf Shaman, Undead Paladin, Undead Paladin Mount at level 40, level 60 version. Racial Knowledge feature. At level 60, you can use this feature to swap your racials to another races after completing lore-appropriate quests. It has a lengthy cooldown of two weeks. Spell names and graphics have been added to avoid weird racial combinations, like a gnome with torn racials and war stomp. That wouldn't make much sense, so they've been swapping that around. It's been done to allow you to pick what race you want without punishment. System does include priest racials, and by the way, Feared Ward is now baseline for all priests. Explorer's Contract. Reduce XP per level to see all the new content while leveling 1 to 60. Gives rewards also at the end game. Can be turned on before level six, can't be turned off. Epoch time. Time travels faster visually. Full day and night cycles now take just a little over three hours. There's there are gameplay changes in Azeroth based on whether it is night or day, such as events, quests, and NPCs. 
which they can even carry torches at nighttime. Now, this is an example of the racial system. This is the explorer's contract. So you can see their rewards, uh, title, the patient. You also get bags. More features, environments and darker nights. New views of Azeroth at nighttime. Nights have become much darker, turn, tuned to fit each zone appropriately. Some zone environments also have changed, such as Tourist Fall Glades. It's more sickly and green looking. New and improved environments, such as lava, water, and green goo in the Undercity. Achievements based on the classic world, including new lore master achievements for each vanilla zone. Smoky Wood Pastures, new reputation in Ratchet that offers quests for solo, group, and PvP, designed like the Winter Spring Frost Taper Grind. Quests focus on level 60 content. The rewards can include a pet, a much desirable cooking recipe, and the Swift as Ever mount. Silithus revamp. Silithus is now an elite mob only endgame zone without Scenarian Hold. The base of operations is now Valor's Expedition, which is closer to Angoro. There's a new endgame rep, rotating daily quests, new recipes, items, mounts, rewards, and more planned for that. It's an example of the Darker Nights, example of a quest that you can only do at nighttime. Darker Night there. Very interesting how dark that is. I like it. Another Darker Nights actually reminds me of a uh, certain world in Star Wars Galaxies. Also, there's an item here. You can see here uh, changes based on night or day. Nighttime again. Nighttime. Here's an example of the Green Goon Undercity. The left is previous and vanilla, and the right is the new one. Same with the water below, left and right. I actually have video footage of the water in my Discord. You can check that out in the channel. Um, but trust me, it looks looks very nice compared to the old version. Achievements, including War Master. Smoky Wood Pastures and Ratchet. Swift Zever Mount. Um, Silithus Revamp, including uh, Bottom Right, I believe that is a potential new world boss in the future. More features. Dual Spec, available for a 1,000 gold fee. Cart Transportation, a new transportation service is available within 1 to 20 zones, carrying up to 4 players across the zone at no cost. Venom Hide Ravasaur, the rep returns at Angoro, matching the grind of the Winter Spring Frost Saber to Winter Spring. Quests are also remade. Soul of Iron, Hardcore Mode. Locate a Chronicle MPC in any faction city to enable Hardcore Mode. Rewards for Hardcore Mode are based on Blizzard's Season of Mastery for those who hit 60, including a unique title. That's the cart transportation. It's a Kodo, I believe, in the Barrens. Ravasaur. War mode, flag yourself for PvP semi-permanently without a faction capital, gives bonus XP and rep, bonus honor at level 60, abandon war mode for a fee that scales based on your level. Now, PvP fans, don't be uh, dismissive of the PvE server concept with war mode. The PvP section is pretty big, and stay tuned for that. Mirage Raceway. Mirage Raceway has been expanded in Thousand Needles, allowing you to race against other players in a new Mario Kart-style minigame mode, rewards cosmetics, Orgrimmar and Stormwind, they have changed a little bit. Orgrimmar has a new Zeppelin area located inside the city. Stormwind has a revamped harbor from Wrath of the Lich King. Suits Vanilla World. Again, Gilgem's Isle, it's a new battleground based on Eye of the Storm with the Strangled Thorn Veil vale aesthetic, which we covered earlier. There's the Mirage Raceway with the power-ups in the bottom. Zeppelin area, you can see the map down below also. Stormwind Harbor. Gilgem's Isle. Even have a the BG map in the top right corner there. Leveling. Let's talk about leveling. One to sixty is one X, like classic. Wow. However, it's going to be a little easier uh, because the classes are structured differently. They're a little bit more powerful. There are new quests, plenty of new quests, new dungeons, so that will ramp up the speed of the leveling. There are over one thousand one hundred plus new quests added to Azeroth. Believe it or not, that range from simple to epic chains. Players enter an introduction guild called Sprouts that you automatically leave at level 20. Mob difficulty in the world has increased compared to Classic WoW. Beast mobs have new custom abilities, and, and also starting at level 14, creatures gradually increase HP and damage. Here's an example of a quest. I believe this is in Darkshore. New quest. 
Now the new quest, this is in winter spring, so keep that in mind. It's not just the early zones. These are every single zone has new quests. Silver Pine. What I like about these two, the previews, they do from first glance look like quests that would be in vanilla. Questing area in Tenaris. Questing area in Ashara with Furbog. Steering, uh, I believe this is Burning Steps, new area. Ashara, this is a revamped Valor Mock. Fellstone Fortress, new elite questing area in Blasted Lands, elite only. More pictures there. I like the statue in the bottom right. These are examples of some uh, maps that you can see with some changes. The top left in Wetlands, uh, you can see some changes, a uh, new area below the excavation site in uh, Arathi in the top right. There's an area called Blazing Hills on the right. Bottom left, you can see Stone Town Caverns, which is a level 60 dungeon above Chared Vale. And bottom right, you can see, uh, I don't know how to pronounce it, Anwatha in bottom right there in Tanaris. Steam Whittle Port in Tanaris is also revamped. This is an example of a, a hidden buff. I believe this is just for the beta, but this is just an example of what they're doing. They are increasing um, the difficulty of the mobs in the world. They think it's too easy and classic. Many new quest hubs across all leveling zones, including a new Ring of Blood, believe it or not, in Stranglethorn Vale. Some old questing areas like Durnhole Keep and Hillsbrad are now elite only. New reputations with rewards for the following towns, kind of like how Ghostlands and the uh, the Drainy area and uh, Burning Crusade had. Auberdeen, Airy Peak, Sepulcher, and Reventusk Village all have reputations now with rewards. There's a new quest to unlock a level 40 mountain writing skill. This grants the mount for free, but not the skill. The skill is the high gold count item with cheap mounts. Costs are like Vanilla Wow. There's a picture of the Ring of Blood. There's a picture of the reputation at Airy Peak. You get, also, there's pets on each uh, each rep. Here we go again. Uh, the reps, it's Sepulcher, and I believe that's uh, Dar Dark, Moon, Dark Moon or Dark... Sh I know Flay Alliance, so uh, you guys are going to kill me for that one. Darkshore. Leveling at Azeroth. All quest map points of interest have been removed. At least three new rare spawns have been added to every zone. Yes, you read that correctly. New Swift Forest Strider mount from Darkmoon Fair. There's also new micro world bosses. Silithid Worker in Tenaris and Corrupted Ancient in Ashenvale. These are for 5 to 10 players and reward dungeon quality loot. More are expected to be announced also in Eastern Kingdom. Kingdoms. Here's an example of the uh, rare spawns and their loot. Three in each zone. The uh, the, the uh, plane strider mount, or no, not the uh, the dark moon fair mount. Micro world boss. Dungeons. All right, what's going on with dungeons? The dead mines and whaling caverns have been revamped with new visuals, new layouts, reworked bosses, and new loot. All other five man dungeons will feature new mechanics and hidden bosses. Scarlet Monastery has received a visual tweak and for its textures to match WoW Alpha. A new Scarlet Charger mount has a very low drop chance off Sally Whitemane in the Cathedral. New dungeon added to STV, uh, Gluttermerk Mines. Level 40 to 45, this will be at launch. New dungeon added to Stone Talon, Stone Talon Caverns. This is the first post-launch PvE content, similar in size to Dire Maul. It's for max level characters. Here's the pictures of the revamped Dead Mines. There's also a video on their YouTube channel. Wailing Caverns also. Wailing Caverns. Again, example of uh, they're buffing all of the five-man dungeon bosses. Uh, k -Totes, the lead dev, actually even showed me some of the increases on a lot of the bosses, and uh, it's significantly higher on a lot of stats. That's a Scarlet Charger and Scarlet Monastery. This is the new dungeon, Glittermark Mines in STV. Stone Town Caverns. Uh, Uber's boss, Ember Seer, um, probably saw that in a video that showcased before I started the PowerPoint, but uh, clearly has new abilities. Dire Maul, not available as it is returning in the future in a new form. That'll be interesting. New endgame dungeon, Baird and Hold, in, in the new zone, Tol Barad, at launch. New instance portals are in the world, hinting at future content. 
hundreds of new armor and weapon items added via quests, dungeons, and raids. Blackrock Depths has new quests, new mechanics for every boss, and new max level pre-raid bis gear. Tier 0.5 is available at launch with options available for different roles per class. No RDF in the game, summoning stones to work as they did in TBC. Some pictures of Tolbarad and Baird and Hold. I like this. This is one of my favorite things so far about this server. I love the look of this dungeon. Tolbarad map. Here's some examples of just some items from Dungeons and the Quests they have on their website. These are some examples of the tier 0 0.5. Raids. This is where it gets interesting. 25 man, no more 40s, 25s and micro 10 mans. New mechanics added to all raid encounters. Over 15,000 items restored to a patch 1.12 itemization state. Itemization also has been tweaked to balance classes in PvP because they're based on TBC. Most combat ratings are also in a TBC state, and there's no world buffs in raids. Tier gear in raids now drop via tokens. So let me explain why and their reasoning, and it'll make a lot of sense. Inspect the token to open a new window to see what the token can become. Their goal is to have tier sets for each role of a class. Having tier drop for all roles of all classes obviously would be too much. Can't do that. You can't turn the token into gear, though. However, unless you're in the right location, it's not for at a vendor like in Wrath of the Lich King. For example, you might have to turn the token into gear at a Rune of Warding in Molten Core or in Blackwing Lair. Tier sets are now six slots instead of eight. Set bonus is two and five pieces with sixth tier item being flexible. The belt and the bracer are removed off the tier sets, but the items dropping in the raid match the appearance with that tier set. So you can get the full set. It's just not going to be eight now. It's just going to be six. Some examples of the tokens. Here's some example of the reforging window. It's an interesting the way they put reforging. Um, just don't, don't get it confused with the cataclysm reforging. Here's an example of the druid tier set. Interesting set bonuses down there. Here's an example, uh, goal mag and molten core with uh, some variations of the loot. There's some, some items are nerfed, some are buffed, and there's also new loot on, uh, you can see there. Onyxia's lair, now three boss raid. Attunement remains the same as vanilla. Molten core is the first raid with Onyxia, receiving all new mechanics, raid loot additions. There's also one new boss, which is undiscovered at the moment. There is a new custom Molten Core Tumit chain as well. Tier 2 will be custom with Oldham in active development as a raid. There will be a new unique quest chain for being attuned to Oldham. So that should excite a lot of you guys. I know I'm excited for that. Blackwing Lair will follow Oldham. Here's some uh, pictures of the new bosses in Onyxia's Lair, including one of the new bosses' abilities. Here's the attunement to Molten Core. Oldham, pictures of Oldham. Volchan and Burning Steps is now an endgame world boss with new mechanics. Micro 10-man raids are planned. Zolgarub and AQ20 are two examples of 10-mans. I guess they'll have to call it AQ10 now. The team is doing what they can to limit data mining of raids and future content. At least the first raid tier will be delayed three weeks post-launch. And the lockouts, Molten Core is currently one week and Onyxia is five days. It's Volchan. Consumables. Uh, the rules are going to follow TBC, not vanilla. There's going to be a hands-off approach with add-ons. If the community wants it, they can build it. No pre-built DBM, boss timers, or Atlas loot is being made for the server. Resistance gear will be important. They've created a formula that is a good mix between vanilla and wrath. More details come in soon, they said in a blog post. All right, now PvP. Now... Don't be concerned with the PvE rule set with War Mode just yet. This section is actually one of the most uh, detail-centric of the whole video. So it surprised me. So Epoch is a PvE server that is primi primarily PvE-focused, but aims to make a good PvP scene with custom content. There are bulletin boards with quests to encourage using War Mode, reward rewarding large XP bonuses. 
New world PvP objectives, including a new timed event in Hillsbrad, a tower control event that rewards bonus XP rep unique vendors at the tower, new weekly quests to win three Warsong Gulch matches at Ashenvale, Barrens, Entrance Portals, quest re rewards a large amount of XP and rep, the PvP ranking system has been removed, you now get gear via honor conquest points, you can get old PvP titles from achievements via a number of honor kills, an example of the uh, Call to Arms quests from the Wanted boards in Stormwind. Here's an example of the Tower in Hillsbrad. Example of the achievements where you can get the title Grand Marshal. Also, looks like they added a Armored Brown Bear. This also goes for Horde. World PvP kills reward bloody coins that you can redeem for combat items and cosmetics. All battlegrounds except Warsong Gulch are disabled until the call of the war patch. Warsong Gulch will be there at launch. New PvP stat, PvP defense, kind of like resilience in a way, decreases damage taken from other players by a flat percent. This also affects pets and minions, not part of your stat budget, as you can take PvP gear into raids and dungeons. Every PvP item besides Trinket have this stat. Basic gear at launch before Season 1, you use Warsong Gulch Marks of Honor to purchase gear for this phase. Gear is going to be like the Tier 0 sets, but recolored. Post-launch with Season 1, it's going to include the BGs, more BGs than Warsong, and Arena. Yes, Arena is in Project Epoch. Cosmetic rewards for top percent in Arena bracket. Percentage is to be determined. The reward will be de to be determined. Each season to have new gear to keep up to date with PvE gear. Honor gear will be rare and Conquest gear to be epic. PvP gear will be less powerful than PvE gear, but they're making the gap small. PvP trinket to be a two-piece set with a set bonus to incentivize using PvP trinkets and not ones from raiding. Two trinkets equals one set bonus. They do not want you to force you to raid to PvP, which I think is a good idea. They're trying to avoid where you have to be forced to, to do something you don't want to do. Two arena maps at launch, Ruins of Lordaeron and Dalaran Sewers. DR and CC to follow TBC State. A couple of you guys asked me to ask about that, so I made sure to include that in the video. There will be a new icon above player's head to show current shapeshift to avoid cosmetics hiding forms like from the druid and shaman. And last but not least, no PvP zone is planned, but never say never. Me personally, I would love to see that. They have an end game Silithus elite only zone, so I think it'd be cool to see a well, only PvP zone. Maybe a zone where you enter and, it's, and you're flagged automatically and it's optional, like the wilderness and runescape. I think that'd be great. Example, uh, stat pvp defense that's the trinkets not final values you also got the tier zero set there professions new profession trainers in the world such as the one to ten zones mining added to teldrassil sea turtle mount available to be fished up tons of new profession recipes professions now have an associated bonus to encourage use of all professions not engineering and then we'll have some examples here to show alchemy and blacksmithing Bonuses only work if you have the profession active. You can't enchant your rings, drop the profession, and keep ring enchants. New profession bags for fishing, leatherworking, and mining. You can now mine herbs certain mobs. New TBC-styled fishing quest in Ashara gives rewards like the Crocolis pets. Glyphs exist, but only as cosmetics. Here's some examples of the professions. Like, for example, in Mixology, you uh, Alchemy, you receive 100% increased duration and 25% increased effect from Elixirs and Flasks, but they're all a little OP, so uh, you get something from each profession, which I, I, I'm a fan of in an RPG setting. Belt buckles there also for blacksmiths. Whole bunch of stuff here with professions. You can even, like, mine the Giants and Feralus, true, true Silver Ore. More stuff here, Enchant Rings. Tailoring uh, enchants in your cloak, heavy saddle, increased mount speed. More items you can see that you can make from, from professions, new items. New item here, pure silver shield, low level shield. Low level fist weapon, from blacksmithing. Here's an example of a new fishing area in Ashara that are based on a TBC uh, fishing quest. You got the Crocolis pets. You can uh, turtle mount, fish that up. Races. Let's get into races. So no blood elves or drain eye. They are, but they're, and they are not planned to be added. They were pretty firm on that. If there will be, a, if there will be a new race or class combination, it could be the troll druid. Team doesn't like the cataclysm forms though, so we'll see. 
Racials are based on TBC. Cannibal eyes and wisp form are removed and are now just cosmetic. Racial abilities now are in a new spellbook tab. Each race has a new cosmetic racial. Torrens could now equip a totem. For example, weapon skill racials have been expanded. Example, uh, guns to increase 1% crit chance. Races now get multiple weapon bonuses. For example, orcs get axe, fi uh, fist, and polearm. Humans get sword, mace, and wand. There's new custom voice acting. No new races, but conversations and experience are being had. Hashtag ogres. Here's an example of the uh, orc. You got to ride a wolf while you're dead with wolves in the background. As a gnome, instead of uh, riding a griffin, you ride your helicopter. Classes. 61 talent points at level 60. Base abilities, trainers, and talent trees are at a TBC state with minor tweaks. The goal is to have any class spec play a role while reducing the OP nature of Wrath of the Lich King. The level 60 plus TBC abilities learned at trainers are mostly at higher levels 50 to 60. The Shaman Totem Bar from Wrath has been adjusted to work with TBC totems. Bloodlust and Heroism affect an entire raid with a 10 minute exhaustion debuff. Consumables and potions can be used while shapeshifted. And also druids can learn pole arms and have a resurrect spell now with a revive. Furor now provides 60 energy, 15 rage, up from 40, 10. Mages can jur mana ruby and has three charges. Keep in mind, these are all examples, but these are probably something that you guys want to know. Warlock sharks, warlock shards stack to five. Most player buffs now apply to the whole raid, not just the group. Hunter pets use Wrath of the Lich King talent menu, but revamp to match the pet training menu. Hunter pets to work like TBC, but looking to add pet variety and expand on new pet families and upgrade pets as part of the continued class rework. Tauren and Gnome Priests have new priest racials. Rogues can now use axes with new axe spec talent, plus crit chance, 1%, 5 ranks. Spell casting damage pushback rules are TBC based. Root fear effects break with damage comparable to TBC. Hots and dots can't crit. Changes to aura stacking rules close to TB state impacts items such as scrolls. No death knights planned. And also new paladin seal for dwarves. Paladins no longer have faction-based seals. They could actually swap them if you want. An example of the druid. The mage. Rune of power. Cool. Paladin. A couple seals there. Seal them out. Priest, including uh, Anshi's Protection and Bedside Banner, which are the to new Torin and Gnome racials. Rogue, Axe Spec, and Redirect. And my plans, this is it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try my best to add this in chapters. This is going to be a long, long video. So I uh, did my best to get it all. As you can see, there's a lot of information here, guys. A lot. Uh, there was no fluff in this video. It was just straight up knowledge of the server. So it's pretty crazy. Uh, my plan is probably going to pick Torn Priest or Undead Hunter. Really want to try out everything. Going to be streaming Beta 3 starting on April 5th, last one month. Streaming the launch in Q2, either here or Kick or both. It will be my main server for the time being, and uh, we'll make videos and updates for the server. So if you guys like this video and you want more information and want updates and you want to see me stream Project Epoch and see more content make sure you uh subscribe to the channel hit the thumbs up button also so you can push this video in the algorithm so you get more eyes on the server helps me out helps the server out helps gets helps us get more population on the server as well especially if it's a successful server um i do think that it will be successful how successful uh, it's to be determined but there are a lot of eyes on the server it is the most hyped server of 2024 in my opinion and we'll have to see how it goes but uh, i am very excited about it let me know down below also in the comment section what you guys think about the server, if you're going to play, what you're going to play, what excites you the most. A lot of information. So, yeah, it's fun making this video. So, I'm looking forward to see what happens next. Anyway, thanks guys. Take care and I'll see you next time.